Special guest of honor, the President of Senegal, Macky Sall. Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly. Your Excellencies, First Ladies. Your Excellency, the former President of the Gambia. Sadao Dakara Bajawara. Sadao Dakara Bajawara, the father of the land. Your Excellency, former President of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama. Honorable Ministers, Honorable National Assembly Members, Members of the Diplomatic and Councilor Corps, Members of the Diplomatic and Councilor Corps, Honorable, Honorable Foreign Dignities, Representatives of Governments here are present, Religious and Traditional Leaders, Invited guests, members of the media, fellow Gambians. May I begin by thanking Allah for making me the third president of this great country through the support of the Gambian people. I seek your guidance and blessings for me and my cabinet to have the strength and wisdom to serve our beloved nation to higher heights. I would like to first of all welcome distinguished head of states and international guests who are here to share this joyous occasion with us. Today is symbolic because of two important developments in the history of our dear motherland. It was on this day that Gambia was declared independent. I was just three days old. Now I am the president of the Republic of the Gambia after 52 years of nationhood. Few people who have taught. Few people would have thought that I'll be standing here today to address the nation. I would like to thank the Gambian electorates for their astuteness. They exercise their civic rights in a peaceful and non-violent manner. During the campaign, on election day, as well as after the election. I will not do justice without recognizing and expressing my sincere appreciation to the Gambians diaspora. They spend time and resources to support my candidacy through the social media. They encourage family members and friends to vote for me. This is a victory for democracy. It is a victory belonging to all Gambians. It is the decision of the Gambians to change a government which has entered itself through the ballot box that has made it possible for us to gather here today. I wish to take this opportunity to thank the Gambian people, ECOWAS, AU, the UN, and all international partners in general for supporting us at the most critical period of our history. This has encouraged, encouraged that democracy has a meaning to our people. 
Gambia have changed forever. The people are fully conscious that they can put government in office as well remove it. No government will ever be able to entrench itself against the will of the Gambian people. This is the lesson we must draw from the change that has been brought by the people. We are now confronted with many challenges. We have inherited an economy that has declined because of the political uncertainty. During the political impasse, businesses were shut down, offices and schools were closed, foreign missions scaled down their staff. 50,000 left the country and over 126,000 became internally displaced. People retracted their movement and the country became ungovernable. The country would have remained in such a situation if the government did not succeed in finding a solution to the impasse. Your Excellencies, Honorable Guests, Fellow Citizens, the government under my presidency will strive to ensure the survival, protection and development of all children. The Ministry of Health and Social Welfare is charged with the responsibility of doing an inventory on the needs of the hospitals in the country in order to determine the input necessary to upgrade the health centers, the health services. It is to ensure staff audit in order to identify concerns and develop programs to enhance staff motivation. The government will seek to partner with ECOWAS, AU, the UN, or the traditional development partners like the US, the EU, UK, and new development partners to improve on infant and maternal health. This is aimed to improve their well-being and reduce mortality. We will work to improve nutrition sanitation, access to clean drinking water, and ensure that primary health care is accessible and affordable to both rural and urban centers. The law of the land instructs that basic education shall be free, accessible and compulsory. All Gambian children must go to school. The Gambia under my presidency will respect the dictate of the Constitution and work with our development partners to make free education a reality. Agriculture shall be given added support to move towards food security and growth in export production and processing crops, livestock fisheries will serve as a base for food security. This will be linked to job creation and increase in income through agro-industrial development. The service sector, which is now the largest contributor to our economy, will be given necessary incentive to contribute towards employment creation and GDP growth. Macroeconomic stability will, be, will provide a fertile ground for telecommunication services, banks, hotels, insurance, housing companies, and other sectors to grow and develop partnerships in Africa and all over the globe. The Ministry of Information and Communication Infrastructure will be giving support to sustain its local area networks. This will make it possible for the government to maintain the regional community information centers 
and provide them with necessary ICTV services. The e-government data center will create better coordination and cooperation between government and institutions. The media, both public and private, will enjoy freedom of disseminating divergent views and dissenting opinions as required by the Constitution. The media, the, the media law shall be reviewed and code of conduct for responsible journalism promoted. This will include the orientation of state media to keep up its public service responsibility. Apart from the reforms to be undertaken to improve on job creation, e-government will build e-government will be utilized to ensure that the personal management office and the labor department would be able to store data on those seeking employment and the jobs available at each given period. This will facilitate proper assessment of employment and unemployment rates, especially among the young people. The government will undertake a major drive to promote employment in all sectors. In the area of infrastructure and development, the government will give the Ministry of Works and Construction Infrastructure time-bound deadline for the construction of Basia Fatoto and Fatoto Koina and Lamin Koto Pasamas roads. The Ministry will undertake to identify all key feeder roads in the country that require feasibility studies to prepare solid plans to source funds for their construction. In the area of energy, the Ministry is charged with the responsibility of ensuring adequate and affordable electricity supply to diversifying energy sources for the basic household needs. The energy sector would be improved. The development of port facilities, road infrastructure, river transport and other services will attract foreign direct investment at a larger scale. The Ministry of Petroleum will focus on developing potentials to exercise control and direction over the seismic surveys being done to explore the potential oil production in the country. Industrial production shall be extended to include robust development of our mining sector and processing of raw material into value-added goods. Transpa transparency will be shown in this area to enable the people to know the development regarding this sector. Civil service reform will be undertaken to link appointment to merit and income to performance. The Ministry of Planning and Good Governance is to be established to facilitate and monitor the development and implementation of the blueprint for social economic development. The provision of quality social services in, is the fundamental objective of the government under my presidency. I will require sustainable macroeconomic st stability and growth. This is why I established a think tank, the Agency for so Sustainable Social Economic Development, ACID. It is charged with the responsibility to establish an expert bank. This will provide data on the different ex uh, ex experience available to share their knowledge and skills. Their expertise will be tapped in order to put in place the inclusive development agenda. Regional administration will be done by public servants and not political appointees. The pay and grading structure of the civil service will be reviewed and pensioners also benefit from the reforms. State enterprises are to be reviewed with the view to adopt policies 
and would ensure that they pay dividend to government instead of being a liability. The government will undertake constitutional and legal reforms, which will, highlight, which will be highlighted in my first address to the National Assembly. It intends to inform to enforce constitutional provisions that are intended to protect the fundamental right of the citizens. Orders have already been given for all those detained without trial to be released. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice will receive information regarding all those who are arrested without being traced. An appropriate commission would be established to conduct inquiries into their disappearances. A human rights commission will be established without delay to complement the initiative of the Attorney General. The National Council for Civic Education will be provided with facilities to conduct civic education to, pro to promote national reconciliation in collaboration with other organizations that are set to promote national unity and reconciliation. The judiciary will receive adequate support in terms of personnel and independence to enable it to deliver justice without fear or favor. Gambia during the impasse knows what solidarity means. Senegal has proven to be a friend in the time of need. The people of Senegal host the people who fled, and the government host, hosted me as president-elect and worked hand in, hand in glove with ECOWAS, the AU, the UN, and the international community in general to ensure that the value of the Gambian people is not violated. In this regards, my first trip as a head of state will be to Senegal so that we could discuss and c conclude on matters such as the Senegambia Bridge, our common borders, the status of the Senegal law, Gambia Secretarial, and other outstanding issues. We want, we want the relationship between the two countries to be a model for African integration. I would like to give special thanks to President Ellen Johnson Salif, the Chair of ECOWAS, the President, President Mohamed Buhari of Nigeria, President John, former President John Dramani Mahama of Ghana, who undertook the first mediation efforts. I cannot conclude without adding the names of President Alpha Conde of Guinea and President Abdul Aziz of Mauritania, who stepped in at the right time. My special gratitude is also extended to my host, President Makisala of the Republic of Senegal. During the impasse, I was given a choice by ECOWAS to stay in Liberia, Nigeria, or Senegal during the impasse. I choose Senegal because of the fact that we are the same people occupying two different countries. I must say I made the right choice and received the greatest hospitality. Your Excellencies, Honorable Guests and Fellow Citizens, I would like to conclude by emphasizing that for 22 years the Gambian people yearn to live in a country where diversity will be breached by tolerance and our determination to work together for the common good. We decided to form a coalition so that those speaking Jola, Sere, Aku, Sarahule, Manjako, Mandinka, Fula, Wolof and other traditional groupings would ensure that we build one Gambia, one nation, one people. Justice will guide our actions. 
this government intends to maintain the spirit of national unity. The whole world supports us, and the Gambia will remain a beacon of peace and hope for others to draw lessons from. Long live the Republic. Long live the United People of the Gambia. Forever, backward, never. Thank you.